Hello everyone, welcome to the last episode of On the Couch with David and Travis for Avatar Season 1. Well, that went by, I mean I want to say it took a while, but at the same time it went by pretty fast. It went by pretty fast. And I mean, it was It was enjoyable. probably a month that we spent watching this, but still it was what we watched each day, what we did, it felt great. Um, they they really, oh wait, what was this, this was Seas of the Fire Nation. The Siege part, of Siege the, of the North. Nation, Siege the of the North, North Part, part 2. two. Episode 20, the season finale, and this is just the perfect way to do it. I mean, we were talking about this a bit last episode, on how you need to have these goals. Like, So we're at a point now where they've overcome something huge, but the end is in the far distance as well. Yeah. And, I mean, right out of the way, the first thing is we just finished it. Um, That sting at the end is mm -hmm. fantastic, because... Yeah. You get this reveal that we have not even come close to seeing all the tools, I suppose, that the Fire Nation has mm, yeah. at the disposal. Most yeah. importantly, Azula, who is, uh, well, I mean, obviously we're going to get more into that, but it's a fantastic character, and we kind of saw Zuko build up his sister a little bit earlier in the episode, which is great. Yeah. And so we kind of have an idea of who this character is. We know that she's Zuko, but even more threatening. Yeah. Which is just the perfect way to leave it, mm -hmm. that this is coming still. It's yeah. not, it's, it's far from over, but we're feeling good about what we did. And really... I think visually, this is has to be one of my favorite like TV shows I've seen ever. Oh Just my god! Visually, there's so much going on. With this, the episode this episode is beautiful, and I like even he when Aang is just like chasing a fly, like a a firefly in the spirit world. It's just so beautiful because it's animated differently than how like the actual. That's exactly world is. what I was thinking of. It looks. It, I can't really describe exactly what it does. But the spirit world, I mean, the Avatar world already looks a little bit different, a little bit more exaggerated in our world, but the spirit world looks just that amount of more unsettling Yeah. that it clearly separates it's like a, little, a different entity. It's like a little fuzzy around it's a, it's the a edges. Little, it's a little rough. It's kind yeah. of, it's not what you would expect. Mm -hmm. Because it would have been very simple to make the spirit world like clean, pristine, white, yeah. like, a, like a church or a building. Yeah. yeah. But it just makes sense to have it here. It's strange. It's rougher. You know. And I think... I think what they do with this episode is really fantastic because it's not Aang learning water bending that saves the day. It's not his air bending. It's the spirit aspect, which I think they've done a great job of building to be an important, if not you know as important as the bending element to being the Avatar. Mm -hmm. And we get more of that later. We've got a little bit of that now, but it's great that, and that's the unexpected way to do it because they brought up the spirituality aspect, but they haven't shoved it in our faces really. Yeah. And to have that be the sort of ultimate solution just works. Yes. And the Avatar state works a lot better in this episode because Aang is pushed to, I think, more extremes, but he's also helped. It's it's made clear that the Avatar state isn't just him when he's angry. Mm -hmm. It's an element of the spirit world working with him. Yes. So it's not something he can just do. It's something that has to sort of be given to him. Mm -hmm. And that makes it that much more interesting. And it makes sense because, like, the moon spirit dying, like... That was kind of like the last line of defense of the spirit world. Mm -hmm. And so it makes sense that then he... Well, Aang is angry, obviously. But then it's also the spirit world saving our world as, at the same time and helping us. And, I mean, again, going with the visuals, it's just great how they do this. We talked more about the yin and yang. We kind of... David had this really great conclusion that yin and yang is kind of like Aang and Zuko. And they pushed even more with this episode where when everything's in balance, the color's normal. When the Fire Nation kills the spirit, everything is overpoweringly red. When the spirit is dead, it's gray. There's no color. Yeah. The the visuals of the world directly imp are directly impacted by the balance of the spirits. Yeah. And the red and they animate everything differently too. Because when the red, when he like steals the moon, it's spirit, not just shaded red. It's not just shaded red. It's it's again. It's kind of. It's almost like you know when you see heat rising out of something and it has that like thick like, mirage-like atmosphere, that is what was, like, put on and the it's, animation. And it's done the stuff. extra extent, too. Yeah. So it feels overbearing. It feels uncomfortable, as it should, because we're out of balance. Yeah. And 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 then when everything's gray, it feels like everything is more two-dimensional. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's animated, obviously, when you can't have shading, because mm -hmm. everything is gray, everything will look two-dimensional, because it's literally not shaded to look three-dimensional. But, like... It's just something in the way that it's constructed that it just makes, it just makes it look very flat. 
and that and that's what we're supposed to feel. That's yeah. the visuals, the story, the writing, all working in tandem. And there's one thing that's not color. I'm sure you noticed was um, UA's eyes. Yeah, because she was part of the spirit world. And I think you know you brought up last episode that the subplot with the romance is a little overbearing, a little mm-hmm. uh, overdone. Mm-hmm. But because we have that connection between her and Sokka, the whole element of her sacrificing itself is that much more of a downer in this episode. Yeah. If she was a character that was more of a non-factor, didn't have a personal connection, then we wouldn't feel the same. I felt I felt sad. I did too. I almost wish that she would have been introduced sooner in the series. Yes, but... Yes, but I don't... I guess the problem that comes with that is how do you organically work someone in the narrative when they're constantly traveling yeah. like that? But I think... I And, like, obviously, we've, since we've seen her for these three episodes, we care about her. Mm-hmm. But I feel like... I mean, if they re... I mean, I feel like maybe in, like, the Air Temple episode, or, like, another episode similar to that, where it's, like, a little... It's, like, you know, episode 14 or 15. Mm -hmm. And it could be, like, you know, she's been captured, and then, like, the Fire Nation... Or, you know, like, something happens, and they run into her, and they have to, like, help her get back. And then, I feel like, then the romance would have developed a little more naturally, and then it would have been a big... Even a bigger emotional deal I think, like, production-wise, though, with what we're given, having her be an element of a three-part finale is sort of the best you're going to get. Exactly. I, and again, I'm nitpicking to the extreme. Yeah, absolutely. And that's like... Well, I, I love to nitpick, but I just can't with this episode, with this last one. I just, I, I feel like I just want to compliment it, commend it. Mm-hmm. I, I, and I really, it's really just like me in terms of how I like my stories. It's not like how, it's not like this is the best way to write a story ever. It's just kind of like how I like to yeah. see my stories. I mean, we so think of things different things because David thinks more like the literary... In writing perspective, I think of things also more of like a production-wise, behind-the-scenes yep. perspective. Yeah. And I just imagine in the context of this show, they were doing... And there's another thing I wanted to bring up. Um, Ko, the spirit of the no-face. I mean, for me, I would have wanted it to be more disturbing, uh, a little more scary, a little more dark. But they pushed it to the absolute limits you could I thought it was with. freaky. Well, I mean, it's obviously the whole spirit world, that whole thing. We talked about it. It evokes sort of like Miyazaki feelings. Yeah. Um, like Spirited Away. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a lot like Spirited Away. Yeah. And I, I don't like like comparing things to Miyazaki, but that's sort of just what comes to mind. Like I, I told Travis, it's like Miyazaki and it's like Spirited Away and Pan's Labyrinth like met. But I mean, it's a kid's Nickelodeon show and they pushed it as far as they possibly could have. Yeah. Because it is a little bit more disturbing than you would see on your average kid's show. Yeah. For me though, I would have just like, if this was an adult show, if this is something I was involved with, I'd want to push it. I want to make it slimier. I'd want to make it grosser. I'd want to make it more intimidating. Yeah. But they're doing everything that they can, and yeah. you can tell. Yeah, I agree. Um, what was I going to say? In terms of um, overall, like, the yin and yang, as Travis and I were talking about, um, what's important about yin and yang is obviously, like, they're two opposites, but at the same time with the yin and the yin and the yang, there's like, a black dot in the middle of the white piece, and then there's a white dot in the middle of the black piece, and it's like the two cannot exist without each other, mm-hmm. and it's not good and evil, it's just two different... Yeah, I didn't like, they did say good and evil in this episode, I didn't like that, because I agree with you, yeah. it's not about good and evil. It's not about the exact opposites, and I think, like, for a kid's show, like, they have yeah. to be a little more concrete about it, but, like, Aang and Zuko, like, Aang is not, like, if you talk about, like, chaotic good mm-hmm. and chaotic yeah. neutral, it's like... Zuko is not 100% chaotic evil, no. and Aang is not 100% lawful good. No. Like, there are parts of both of them that they have faults, but then they also have very redeemable qualities for in each of them, and they're so similar. And like you said when we were watching it, it's like, if they had had the same background, maybe things could have been If different. you switched, or if, like, what I'm thinking, if you switched their upbringings, you would get almost identical characters. Yeah. If you had Aang growing up the way Zuko did, and Zuko growing up the way Aang did, yeah. it just makes sense, but, like, on a base personality level, they're almost, like, twins. They're almost exactly the same. And mm-hmm. in, in a good way. Yeah. Um, and, and really, it's, like, fire and water, and, like... Black and white, black and white red and blue. But those are opposites, but they all can't exist without the other. Mm-hmm. Because if you're going to have fire and water, you need something that is the opposite of fire. Mm -hmm. But water is then defined as being the opposite of fire, right? It's like black and white. Black is the 
all the colors white or white is all the colors, black is the absence of color. Yeah. And you need a concept of the other to define the other. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's the yin and the yang idea that I think works really well in this episode. It works beautifully. Where it's like they need they need each other to exist. It's like when the joke like it's like Joker and Batman. Yeah. You know, that's like the classic yeah. example of Dark Knight where Joker's like, You need me or else you're nobody and that's kind of true of and that's, the and that's great, and I think you get these other moments at the end where you start to see Zuko. Because you see, Zuko sees Zhao, and it's, that's another great thing going even back again, is you get this moment where Uncle comes out, and when, when Zhao has the fish and he's going to burn it, and he says, stop, you can't do this because there are things that are bigger than our war, bigger mm-hmm. than our squabble, there are yeah. things larger than us, yeah. and he's not afraid to stand up for that. Yeah. And I think Zuko sees that. And at the end, I think you get this very beginning impression of Zuko saying, maybe what the Fire Nation is doing is wrong. Yeah. Maybe these aren't the people I want to impress. Yeah. And that's an important part of his growth as that a character. Is. And we already know that Iroh knows a little bit more about the world than he's letting on, because he could see the dragon, spirit dragon. He's. Been, they actually said that he's been to the spirit world, they yeah. hinted in this episode. So yeah. I think it's obvious that he's not, you know, allegiance to the Fire Nation. He wants to do what he can to help... Um, Zuko, yep. in whatever way. Even if Zuko wants something that is against his morals, potentially, he cares about him so much that he wants to help and him. I like think, and I think, like, Iroh is played in a way where he knows that if Zuko captures the Avatar, he's not going to turn him in. But, Iroh knows he won't. No. And I think he also, I think, yeah, he has enough faith in him that, and it's just, that's, that's great. That's something you don't see. Yeah. I mean, in a, in a lesser show, Zuko would be the straight villain. Uncle would be his... Yes, man, sidekick, yeah, yeah. whatever. Yep, yeah, exactly. But it's not that. It's just not. Yeah. And that's what... I mean, the whole Zuko Aang element is what is the heart of the show, I think. Mm-hmm. So the closer we get to them being and having the same goals and ideas, the... And I, I mean, they kind of... At the end, the Fire Lord says he's a traitor, it's a failure, I don't care about them anymore. We got a little wa- long-winded there and it stopped, but we're, <laughs> we're going again. Well, and it's important to still have that villain in the background. Mm-hmm. Like, this this season it was Zhao, mm-hmm. who was the villain in the background. And, like, it's still important to have that negative, that, like, that, like, objectively negative force mm-hmm. that, the, that the people are trying to fight against. Because I think it's still a kid's TV show and it's still, like, you have to have that villain inside there just to... For the plot But that's p- kind of part... I mean, okay, so part of, like, making shows better is, you know, these are people that are living in the real world, yeah. and the mass, vast majority of people are good and bad. Yeah. Most people are like Zuko, where they do bad things, but they're good. But there are people like Zhao who are just sort of inherently yeah. negative. Yeah, exactly. And and they need that, f- they need that force in this mm-hmm. series to exist. Like, if it was just Zuko as the villain, it wouldn't work as well. No, absolutely not. Like, they need they needed that. So, that's really balanced perfectly. I feel like, oh, and obviously we're gonna get Toph in the next season, and yeah. then we're gonna get Azula and some of her friends as well. But, like, the five main characters, and then six if you want to include Zhao, mm-hmm. like, they're so strong, and the relationships between all the important characters works so well and that's what makes avatar work so well absolutely and like just what they've achieved with character in the season so far is like basically nothing like you've seen on kids tv before absolutely absolutely i can't think of another example that's sort i mean you can think of maybe stuff from like france or japan or other Mm -hmm. countries but in terms of like american primetime children's television this is the bar yeah and like at the, and like we've mentioned before, around this time, Teen Titans kind of came around too, yeah. and they were, and that's really the other big one too that kind of did. And that was great, but it does not. It, it does some wonderful things. I love that show, but yeah. it does not go the same distances that this one does. Yeah, and I, and this is kind of known, and it's in the cultural consciousness more of like the a- Avatar is the series that manages to make a kids' TV show like prestigious. If I had one thing that I was kind of thinking about with this episode is, <coughs> I wasn't, I was sort of confused on Zhao's conclusion. Obviously, he was too prideful to take Zuko's hand and do yeah. it, but I just didn't really understand what they were trying to say with that. I mean, obviously, he's gone, but I think it maybe would have made more sense if we had seen Zuko overpower him mm-hmm. and then question whether or not he's going to actually, you know, do this thing and mm-hmm. question whether or not he was actually going to finish him off, which we know he wouldn't. Yeah. And then have the Avatar Spirit thing do it. But as it was, he was sort of just in the middle of their fight and doing it. So it's... 
I like the idea that Zuko's the one to fight him because he should be. He's the one he has the main quarrel with in the personal connection. Yeah. But it doesn't feel... That's the one thing which doesn't feel as satisfying for me. I think that could have been played out longer. Mm -hmm. Um, And I really don't think that even... I mean, like, we don't want to make Zuko, like, the bad guy. Like, he he obviously is the bad guy, but we don't want him to, like, kill somebody. Mm -hmm. But we also don't want the Avatar to kill somebody. So it's like... No, he's not Slipknot, he's Fallout Boy. Exactly. So I understand why it's difficult to create that scene, because you are Mm -hmm. still making a kid's TV show. Yeah. You don't want to explicitly kill someone. Well, see, that one was great. I really liked it. I mean, we just keep bringing up more things to talk about. That's what was great, is when they actually killed the spirit. They, I mean, it's a fish... But they actually showed it dead. Yeah. And that's a huge thing you would not see. I'm sure this was TV PG, not TV mm-hmm. like Y7. But that's something you would not see very often. And that that's what adds the weight to the scene. And that's what's important for kids is showing sort of death. Yeah. And showing acts of violence. Because it sort of teaches the consequences of these actions. Yeah. And, and and because there is such a lack of that violence. Early, like, obviously we have action. But there's a lack of, like... The repercussions of the after after mm-hmm. actions have been made by the main characters, it makes killing the moon spirit feel so much bigger mm-hmm. because it's like actually the first time where it's like we see an action on screen that a character makes that ends up in somebody dying, and it's and they they make it clear this isn't just bad for these people, this is bad for everyone, and this mm-hmm. again it ties into the war, it ties into the duality, it ties into the imagery. Yeah, I mean we could probably talk about this one for a long time yeah. but it's just it's a very like this is an episode where you could see it in like it, like if this you could see it in a movie but they didn't exactly yeah do that one. but like this would be an episode you would see like in like a very like an adult anime mm-hmm. that's like known that's like known for being amazing the like only amazing limitation this has is preconceived notions about animation yeah because if you made this exact season in live action and put it on i don't know it would not amc work. no it, well i mean assuming that everything did work mm. people would love it people would be like wow this is fantastic and it would win emmys and all that yeah i mean obviously it works right now but i'm assuming i'm going under the notion that imagine that it did work yeah and i think a lot of a reason that this the people might just be like oh it's a cartoon yeah and that's just sort of the thing you have to get past because this is the kind of entertainment that bridges the gap for kids, for adults, for genres, for mediums. Yeah, exactly. It's the kind, I mean, these episodes and this whole season as a whole, we should probably get to our summation of that. Yeah. I, we kind of have already. But these are the kind of things where you just watch this, you say, this is something you feel like people should see. Yeah. This is the kind of thing where if we study television to the same capacity we studied literature in school you'd be like let's watch this and talk about this yeah for a seventh grade class or something yeah because there's so much to learn there's so much to be entertained by and there's a lot you can sort of talk about and think about on your own yeah i really and this i would i would say like a very similar thing to this would be like some of the really good pixar movies Mm -hmm. or if you're thinking of video games like a lot of, like, Majora's Mask would be an easy one to say sh- Say that has, like, the same ideals, or um, a game like... Visually. Like, visually. Well, I'm, and I'm just saying, like, in terms of, like, children's entertainment, that's obviously about more mm-hmm. than just the simple entertainment value of it. Mm-hmm. Like, Pixar movies, there's more going on yes. behind the scenes. This like, is not something you can just... I mean, if you're like, oh, I want to plot my kids in front of a TV for three hours... This is not that. Yeah. And it's something that you could, like, write an in-depth... You could write a lot about this. In, but yeah. on a kid level, this is the kind of thing where kids could watch this and start asking questions. Yeah. Like, you know, sort of thinking about what they've been told and seeing it in this different way. Yeah. And that's... It sounds kind of out there, but it's just the truth. I don't know. It, it just... Fe- it's like, this is just an episode that is... That it should be, like... It sounds really cheesy, but like it should be studied. You know, like yes. it's just it just feels like a it feels like a momentous episode. I mean, that's kind of what, I mean. We're only scratching the surface, and we're unscripted, so we're doing the best we can. But I mean, if me and David wrote a scripted Avatar series, it would be a million minutes long, and I would never want to edit it. Yeah. But um, no, this is a. I mean, let's let's think grand scale. We had some highs. 
We had some lows. And some lows. Some very high highs, though. Yeah. And what you're walking away with is something that, I mean, assuming, pretend I watched this for the first time. It's something I'm not going to forget. And yeah. I obviously, I mean, maybe specific plots, but there's scenes, moments, characters that you're just, you're, they're going to stick with you. Yeah, exactly. Like, this is like, I feel like this is like a watershed moment mm -hmm. in the series. Like, when people talk about Breaking Bad, they talk about Ozymandias, right? Like, that's an episode that people well, always think of. Like, maybe we'll maybe we'll get... I don't know if we're quite there yet. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, like, in terms of, like, episodes of TV shows where it's like, okay, this is the mark where, like, this is an important episode that you have to understand in depth in order to, like, get why the series is good, and I feel like this is one of those episodes. Okay, so that's your... For me, someone who's seen the whole show, I don't think we're there yet. I know we're going to get there, but I don't think we're at the... I mean, we've seen a lot, and it's been fantastic, but I don't think mm -hmm. we're at the sort of, like, jaw-dropper, what did I just watch, this is real now Yeah. part. Yeah. And I think a lot of good, the best shows all have that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Breaking Bad was a little late to the game on it, but they, they have some good stuff before it. Yeah, well, and, and just, like, talking about any kind of, like, prestige or, like, really, like, critically lauded TVs or movies, it's like, there's always parts of it that are like, this is a very important one. What I, I see like it is, is I don't think... If you're enjoying the show and it's something you enjoy, I don't see how you could walk away from this finale and not want to finish it. Yeah. Because sometimes you get to the end of the season, you're like, oh, we'll see. But this is, you kind of have to see what happens to these characters yeah. at this point. Just, and I I just can't express enough like how visually, mm -hmm. like this series pushes visuals so much. Mm -hmm. and It didn't have to. It didn't have no, to. No, and no. it could have been just like, Oh, we're just throwing water around, but there's so much care and detail put into everything that oh my God, they're so passionate. You it's, can just tell. It's like you can, it, like you said, you can just tell that they're going in depth, and it's I don't. It's just like something where it's like sometimes it's hard to explain like why it's so awesome and beautiful, but it is. We're just spitballing. Yeah, but that's that's season one. Obviously, we really liked it, and we're definitely, absolutely going to finish the show. Yes. Uh, I think we're going to take a little break and try something just a little bit different, just because we're still experimenting with On the Couch with Travis and mm -hmm. David. We've got some good reception, so we're going to keep doing it. We're, we're testing here. We're going to try something else, mm -hmm. um, but we're going to finish it. Yeah, next up... We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll no, 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 no. Oh, next yeah. up, yeah, we're going to start watching episodes of This Old House. And we'll review those. What is this old house? It's like a PBS show where they do, like, renovations and stuff. That'll be fun. Okay, well, well, we'll come in with a new preview of what we're doing next, like we did with this one. Yeah, we'll do a season opener. Yeah, and we'll, we'll start watching it. It'll be quick. It's just one season. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get back to Avatar. And then I think we just gotta, we gotta gun that. Because yep. I, I, gotta, <laughs> I gotta see more. <laughs> I wanted to, the worst thing is I've watched the show already this year. I watched it in January. Mm -hmm. But I just, I gotta see it. It's just so good. <laughs> Like, I, like, thesis of this entire season is so good, and it's just, it's gonna keep getting better. I'm really glad the last episode wasn't the fortune teller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that we can forget. Okay. We'll be back. We'll see you around.